wake up on film hello everyone welcome to the writer time archive here on the morphin network and i am mike uh your host and for some reason um steve is trapped in a time warp limbo so unfortunately he can only be heard but not quite seen are you all right there steve yeah, we're just here wearing fishnet stockings and doing the time warp. Yeah, you know, those Imagine or Fan Guy or whatever the bad guys are, are really messing with the timeline, aren't they? It's it's to the point that I think that good old Doc Brown and Marty McFly are just head slapping each other right now. The time The timeline is just out of whack. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, like my poor guy, Steve, like he's just trapped there and he can't physically return to our point in time. So what, so what were we discussing today? Well, the classic time travel film, I'm just kidding. It is Kamen Rider Kiva, the movie King of Hell's Castle. And I know there are like other like translations of the name, like like king, uh, like king of the castle in the demon world, but a lot of the early advertisements for it in 2008 were called King of Hell's Castle, so like that's what I'm going with. Of course, the movie came out in August 9th or August 8th or 9th of uh, 2008, which means that uh, yeah. Yeah, so it so the movie was released uh, right between the airing of episodes twenty seven and twenty eight. How did it do in the box office? I have no way of telling because neither Wikipedia nor the Writer Wiki have any information on that. Unlike other films that we've discussed already. Um. I mean, only have one yeah. Movie, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've discussed uh, Shin Kamen Rider, Real Time, um, the Amazons movie, the O's, sorry, not O's, the um, Build movies, which one of them is technically an O's movie. <laughs> uh, you know, when they revealed that O's was like the strongest common writer at, in the Heisei, I was like, what? But then again, I was like, okay, well, I mean, but to, to do a movie with a build while O's is like five or six years is his senpai, it's kind of like, wait, what? What? Yeah, time flies, time flies, time flies. Yes, and so, well, so in my experience, because I've uh, because this movie came out between episodes 27 and 28, I typically would watch this movie like right after episode 28, just so we're not doing a break between a two part episode. But and Kivat does bring up the movie shamelessly, but not quite as shamelessly as uh, Hibiki does in the show Common Rider Hibiki, but you know. Uh, but as it turns out, this movie is not quite canon. So, where we discuss this film compared to the episode timeline is relatively arbitrary. As long as it's at any point between, as long as it's at any point between episodes twenty-four and twenty-seven. <laughs> It's a very large gap, I will say that. But is any actual film in any actual series technically canon? Like, even if the creator, even the person who made the show, is involved with the film, it's like, is it canon? Like, technically, no. At least not, uh, not at least not before a decade. Yeah, but decade even then, I was like, so what made decade so special? They're like, oh, it's the anniversary season. I'm like, uh huh, and so was Forze, but apparently, that so several movies on Forze aren't actually canon either. I mean, aren't they though? Because, because he does have the twin rocket though. <laughs> Only but he, in one movie, I think. Two movies. And one episode. 
But I will. I mean, uh, I mean, like, if there's something that's introduced in the movie and shows up later in the TV show, and they make a like a significant reference to it, then it is technically canon. But like, I take a. But like, this kind of goes back to complaints we've had about um, a Hesse Generations final, where where like, oh, that one scientist had that um, had the Funky Bros suit that's like half red, half blue, and then it's like. And when the actual funky bro show up, uh, uh, like Sento's like, hey, it looks like the same technology used by that guy from the winter film that we were in. And then they just told, they just told Bill, no, shush. Shush, silly rat. Shush. Because no, it's a cameo, but never really like, oh, yeah, what? What movie? There was no movie. Yeah. Yeah, and sometimes there's like build up to stuff like those three members of the blood who become like the new prime ministers of Japan, like just before the movie oh, Be the man. One, yeah. but then it's never yeah. brought up again after the film. <laughs> yeah, that's why with this movie, I was just going in. I'm like, this is an interesting concept. This is truly like, well, how are we going to do this one? And I thought it was being, in all honesty, not to go into too much of it, but I thought it was very well executed in what they did mixing both timelines. But right, yeah, just sucks that you know technically yeah. it's just the story that happens. It's not technically canonically with the story, as which mm-hmm. most of these movies tend to do. So mm-hmm. also, there's kind of like a few uh, heavy question marks with exclamation points of like how certain people know who these people are except like they never actually said who they are to them mm-hmm. but they just automatically right. know like instinctually yeah 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 i would have to say this um but yeah what really makes this movie like less than canon is the fact that one big change is that Wataru is already known by everyone else as being Kava, and they just accept him too. Yeah, uh, that... and like this doesn't happen. <laughs> oh my god! But, yeah, it's like yeah. finding out that Clark yeah. Kent is Superman, and everyone's like, "Oh, cool, yeah, 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 yeah." yeah. And 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 then there's the fact that oh, like a oh, Wataru doesn't recognize uh, Jiro and the other arms monsters. And then, and then, like when we see things that happen in later episodes, certain characters don't recognize each other, even though they technically would have happened earlier if the movie was canon. So it's like, what? Yeah, I know. It's uh, it's very, very like again, who writes these scripts? Seriously, I, but yeah, and, you know. yeah, and I, and I know that like past common rider movies like because the show airs from like february to january instead of september to august um like the summer films would take place in the future compared to like the actual story but like how it plays out isn't doesn't always work out. Like like some examples, um, Common Rider Ryuki episode final. Like we could say, oh, it takes place between episodes forty seven and forty eight, and for the most part, it could work. You know, because like it does end similarly. Uh, enough. Uh, Common Rider Fies, like we could say, oh, it takes place way further in the future after the ending of uh, of uh, the actual TV show. Uh, uh, Missing Ace, that one's a little bit weirder because it definitely shows a different conclusion to the uh, to the battle royale, but then but then they time skip for like three or four years into the future. But I think the one that handled things... Oh! Uh, Hibiki is the prequel! But but I think the one that was handled the best... 
uh, but the one that was handled the best was probably Kabuto because even though it does have like an alternate story, it is revealed that the alternate story is actually a prequel from another timeline <laughs> that leads into so the pre- TV show. Prequel, it's, a, it's a prequel to another to another story that technically is not within canon of our own story. No, no, no it, it's it's sort of like a, a side quote to the main story in that it's like in a separate timeline but yeah. it ripples into causing events to begin in the first episode of the TV show timeline okay okay yeah but yeah, enough so like with multi universe canons let's get down to this movie yeah. shall we that's what yeah. people can Deno definitely was canon though <laughs> All right. So I've not seen this much of Deno, but I'll take your word for yeah. it. Yeah, no, De- Deno's movie was like very built up and it is canon because they heavily reference things in it and uh and the movie does have consequences that happen later in the TV show. But yeah, so this movie could be taking place for later in the show. But again, a lot of contradictions. But let's get into the actual yeah. plot of the movie. We're introduced to like a, a new race of uh, of the uh, thirteen legendary species, uh, known as the Legendora. Just, just, uh, just a little side one. Do we ever find out about the? I know we got Fangars, humans, and these things. Do we ever find out about the other ten? I mean, we know that Wolf and uh, Merman. Yeah, 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 know, no, okay, yeah. so so we know that you we got humans, fangires, wolfen, merman, uh, um, franken, dorons, you know, the dragons, God, that works. yeah, and the legend Dora. So that's seven out of 13. 13. I, I don't think they ever reference what the other ones are. <laughs> I mean. That that's kind of the thing because I was like, someone was asking me, "Do we ever find out about the other thirteen species?" And I'm like, "Not that I'm aware of." And I know yeah. that they mentioned like half of them, but not all of them. And mm-hmm. you know, let's not let's not go into Lovecraftian territories there because even then, yeah. apparently, Kivats are considered one of the thirteen races. So that brings us to eight. Hmm. Okay, yeah, Frank yeah. and Doron, Legendora. Okay, so the remaining species are mermaids, which seems arbitrary since we already have mermen. We already have mermen, though. Mermaids, yeah. mermen. One has legs, yeah. the other doesn't. Yeah, we got ghosts, apparently. Not the rider, but actual ghosts. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and while they have their own article on the writer wiki, the article is only one sentence long. So I'm mm. like, what's the source for this? Uh, let's see. let's see, gigants. Oh, uh, let's see, a gigant, a gigantic like race. They reside in high altitude in the snow mountain. Really? When was this ever referenced? They have two subspecies, yetis and cyclopses. When was this? Okay, uh, they're used to develop common rider rays, gigantic claws. Okay, so no maybe idea, we man. might, we you're, might have you're, like, your guess is good Okay, apparently we got hobbits as one of the species. <laughs> Who said? Is that actually canon? Is that actually a thing? We got apparently hobbits in the in in Kiva. Apparently, there's a spin-off novel adaptation. Oh boy! And I think that's where they pretty much list off the remaining species. And lastly, Don't it's goblins. Okay. See, this is see. I would say this is my issue with with a thirteen legendary race thing because because honestly, I feel like at that point it would just be easier to say that the four legendors that we see would 
just be mem different members of the 13 demon races and just say, oh, they conglomerate it into a legend or a clan. Because I feel like that would have just been made more sense because we got a Gorgon, we got uh, our Gargoyle, a Mummy, a gargoyle. And, and a Mandrake. So, like, that could have been, like, four. Yeah. That could have been four yeah. Yeah. of these six species because if we're going to take out Legendora, uh, like, that means, like, we would have seven. And if these four would be four separate species, then, like, that would uh, bring us up to 11. <laughs> And mm -hmm. yeah, like it, yeah. And, and like if Ray's claws are supposed to come from the gigant clan, then like, okay, show us one gigant or make a reference to a gigant so we could add that would, to the list. Would Ark fall under that? Not to go into heavy spoilers before we get there, but would Ark fall under gigant? I keep good. Keep good. I mean, like freaking. I mean, clearly he's. It's it's not even clear if Ark is a Fangire or a or a Legendora because because like the main thing about this movie is that the bad guys here are not Fangires, even though we see like three other Fangires. Um, but, like the bad guys are actually a different species of the uh, thirteen races, known as the Legendora. And again, I feel like it would make more sense if the Legendora was just the name of like a union of four of those species because we do see <laughs> they the four legendary yeah. yeah 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 you know kind of like how the arms monsters are are fall under the same flag even well, though we all know why we all know why the arms monsters are in castle dora it's not by i mean technically it's by choice but yeah if there were a real like i mean seriously mm -hmm. Would you want to be locked up in there for all that time? No, I wouldn't. But the point is, even before, like even at the start of the series, uh, three of them were always hanging out together. Well, yeah, if you're going to be locked up with, with somebody, you might be locked up with your bros instead of just... Yeah. Can you imagine if Yuri was in there? Oh, my God. It'd be, it'd be just absolute chaos. Yeah. Yeah, but at least it would provide it, it could provide some comic relief for Jiro cuz he needs more of Jiro that. is a salty old dog. That's <laughs> all I'll say about Jiro. Yeah. But, yeah. Okay. No. So, we got this movie and apparently we got some what isn't it always the way that you're bringing in something and it's like just why is there a face sticking out of the stone tablet? Yeah. And no one stops to question it. Yeah. And it's a very, like, creepy-looking face. I'm just like, I don't know. It's old. Yeah. It's ancient. Maybe we shouldn't touch it. No, let's touch it and take it back. There's no curse. There's no such thing as curses. No. Yeah, and that opening and scene out of nowhere. That. Like, I swear, it's like seeing a pillarman from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and just, like, Mario Zeppeli. Like, it. It gave me some Hellraiser vibes, you know, like <laughs> yeah. not oh, yeah. like the third one where he's kind of in the pillar and then that idiot like just thinks he's gonna release him and he's gonna they're gonna be buddies, but it's like no, 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 no I'm the girlfriend, ripped her skin off, mm -hmm. then I take your skin, and then but this mm -hmm. time it's not it's not hooks or anything, it's like bandage wrappings and. Weird stone yeah, mask yeah, faces death masks. that are like, yeah, yeah, that was creepy when they slapped on the people and then dragged them back into the pillar. I'm like, did they just get assimilated? Uh, yeah, yeah it, it's like it's like watching the pillar men from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Yeah, 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 they're just like getting absorbed. I'm like, oh my god, it's the blob. But yeah, the it's 90s like these version. It's yeah, it's like it, it's like what it's like when someone asks me to describe JoJo Part Two, I always say it's like. Well, basically, the main character is Indiana Jones, played by Arnold Schwarzenegger, who has to fight against Aztec mummies. Notice how I say Aztec mummies, not vampires, mummies, mm -hmm. which makes it appropriate here because this is an actual mummy. And it, yeah, know, this is an actual mummy. 
And, and you know, this makes me think back to uh, Ben 10 because uh, there was like this whole story arc where like Ghostface goes rogue, becomes a villain, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then we talked about that he... in, in the original in our first airing of Kiva, where yeah. this was very Ben 10 ish inspired kind of. Well, at the time, that was Ben 10 was 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 uh, very was I think airing at the time. The first season, I think. No, the first season aired in 2006. Sure. But I think okay, okay. that so already but I think the so episode we were, we were in question already... was a season three, so. Yeah, so we were already like kind of at like teenage Ben, not the kid. Because at that point, it's kind of like they had, they had like mentioned alien species, they had a werewolf, they had a mummy, they had a, a, a Frankenstein a Franken. type one. And they yeah. also, I mean, technically they had like a, Ooh, a, look at that. A, a, it was gil, a gill three. man. Yeah, it was like a oh, gill look. man type of thing, but not. Oh, yeah. Not Rip like, Jaw was like one of his 10 original aliens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't like necessarily referencing the creature, but it's like, yeah, it is the creature. But it's like out of nowhere, it's kind of like Ghostface was trying to like get these guys to take over the world. And here we have this mummy is trying to which stuck can't do stills anymore. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like pretty freaking, awesome. yeah, so the so the so season three of Ben 10 air well at least the episodes that we're referencing, <laughs> they actually aired in 2007, which is a year before Comrade yeah. Cuba did. <laughs> But still, it's like the fact that there's a money involved. Maybe, maybe it was. Maybe it was. I mean, I want to say that they had already developed it. They already knew because this is referencing the Universal Monsters. But yeah. still, I'm like, yeah, it's kind of crazy how Benton did that. And now in this movie, well, obviously you're gonna bring out the mummy, obviously, but a gorgon and a gargoyle. Oh yeah, and a man and, and a mandrake. Yeah. Mandrake was like probably the one that was out of place, but hey, props for having a plant themed monster. Yeah, um, but yeah. Plant yeah. Yeah. Now uh now so we do find out that there's another organization outside of uh Aozora called the Worldwide Wing uh Association, where they hunt Legendora, just like how Aozora fights against Fangires. And amongst yeah. them is a guy who uses the giant powers of common Rider Ray. And well, um, he used to be... He, 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 he's not in the show yet, but he's, this is the same actor who portrays another character later That we on. haven't met yet. <laughs> we haven't met yet, but they're two different people. Let us just, re <laughs> let us just reference that right now. They're two different people. It's not like the the head of the organization where he looks at his proper age in 2008 compared to his 86 self, which is wearing a very... I think it's the same wig. I think they're wearing the same hairpiece because it's like, look at look at them both. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, no, no, it's like... No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, it's like, it's like, it's like this. That the head, that the head of Blue Sky is like, Oh yeah, but he's like he's got this very like very news anchorish like Will Ferrell type of hairdo. And then in this movie it's the same damn hairdo, but it's a different character who's supposedly the same character who's the same guy that's later on in the story. Yeah. Yeah, no, like it's like you, it's like no, how, you like, have no other stylists. You have no other people it, working on the show. Yeah, it, it, it's like it's like how like the actor who played the younger version of Burai in G Ranger ends up playing Ko in Die Ranger. It's like, oh yeah, no, it's like no, the Green Ranger in this season and the White Ranger in that season may look yeah. like the same person, but they're definitely not the same person. They're not the, yeah. Well, the thing that was two different shows of two of a same series. I'm talking about like. It's the exact same person, sans wig. <laughs> it's like, I'm like, okay, okay, you know. I'm just kind of like, you got, did, did you not have any other hairstylists available? Were they all sick? Why, why did we just pluck the head 
of the head of the organization onto this character for Common Rider Ray. You know? Yeah, they're really trying to make uh, everyone look very Showa in their hairstyle. Yeah, yeah, that that was that was the thing. I was like, you know what? This really embodies '86 because everyone's got that same '80s hairstyle. The girls are all big hair, while the guys also have big hair, but it's very like bulk. It's more bubble like. Yeah. 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 No, I'm actually looking at. Um... I'm actually looking at the two pictures of Takato from uh, King of Hell Castle and uh, the other character that Shoma Yamamoto played, who will remain nameless for now. Uh, and um, yeah, no, the hair is very different. <laughs> now, um, and, 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 and yes, and yes, as a fun aside, just uh, just like how. Uh, one of the female characters from Ki one of the female actresses from Kiva did the voice of Kamen Rider Siren in Dragon Knight, and uh, and Kiva the third also did a voice of a Dragon Knight character. Um, yes. uh, Shoma Yamamoto played Brad Barrett in Dragon Knight. That so, was which one was that uh, one? That was Common Rider. Uh, he's the Rhino one. Oh, he played. He's he played. He played Sai, yes. but the American version. He, he played that guy. Oh. Uh, Naito. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Because uh, uh, his Japanese name is Guy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's kind of fun, like, uh, finding these things out. Um, yeah. Oh, and he was also in Garo, apparently. We'll get to Garo one day. And he was the Gold Ranger in uh, Dino Force Brave. Interesting. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. So, apparently Yamamoto gets around when it comes to Tokusatsu. He's one of those guys. He's one of the, he's one of the OGs. Yeah. All, all he needs now is to, like, is to do a Japanese dub of an English dub of Ultraman. And then you have like a reverse e -cut. I, You know what? You know, crazier things have happened. Crazier yeah. things have happened. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, man. Uh, crazy times. But yeah. Um, but yeah. So we find out oh, uh, Wataru has to infiltrate a school. And then we get infiltrate. a flashback. Infiltrate these. I won't say, but you know what I'm gonna. You know what I was going at. He yeah. was. He was forced. He yeah, was the like, no, up, the, the movie straight up starts with him already in school. It's like, how did I get into this? I'm like, first That's off, how we end up with the plot of the. Wataru. First off, Wataru. How old are you? 20. Like, legitimate. Yeah, you're 20, and they're telling you go to school. Like the, okay, I know, the, I know he looks, I know he looks young. I'll be like, you know what? That's the thing about about Asian genes. You know, they look younger. They they look r ridiculously young for their age. It's like it's like we but, it's it's like okay, but, we get it. You're a 20 year old with a 14 year old mommy, but my 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 uh, my my beautiful wife, Shizuka, freaking Rika. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, no, it's just like oh yeah, I totally agree. You should go to school, and I'm like. Honey, he's 20 years old. Isn't that against the law? Yeah, like like here in America, if you're over the age of 16, you have to, uh, like the only Let way you can go back to school is is literally if you just take a GED. You don't even get to have the classroom experience. Yeah, let us not let us not uh, have that same incident that happened a couple of years ago about that one uh one high schooler who was actually like 30 something and then playing on the on the high school basketball team. Oh geez. Or or, yeah. or that or that scene from Bench Warmers where like you got this 30 year old dude who has a note that says, I am 12 years old. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh man. But yeah, no, and then and then we get a flashback and say how we got here. And you know how I feel about flashbacks. All right, well. Oh. 
I'm not a huge fan personally of the whole three weeks earlier teaser thing. I feel like, you know, we should start our stories where they begin, not start them where they get interested. Get out. Um, what? Yeah. So yeah. Well, too bad, Morty. We got to do a flashback, Morty. <laughs> yeah, and and weirdly enough, a lot of the characters at this high school have this obsession with referencing common writer Denno because, because yeah. first we got the homeroom teacher who like starts erasing stuff on the whiteboard and it's like it's like it's like my writing has made you cry. What wipe the board with this? Yeah, and I'm kind of like you know, it's it's one of those things where, you know, even in anime, well, I guess in anything in Japanese, where you're just like, man, this is seriously a, such a Japanese class. Not not like language-wise, but just the, the vibes. Although I'm like, you know what? They took anime and made it real because they decided to put watch on you. Like, well, for, well and before we get... And yeah, yeah. It, he got sat next to this really cute girl who I thought for a minute was actually a Sentai actress, but it wasn't. I had to double check. Like, no, that's not who I was thinking it was. Yeah. But she said that she was like, no, we got to get you into some clubs or whatever. I'm like, what, what, what is the deal with like clubs? I mean, yeah. it's like, I mean, the, the, the ja I mean, I get why, but the Japanese really, really focus on like, the club thing, which is crazy because I've had friends um, in college and out in my travels that I like, you know, live and were raised in Japan and everything. I was just like, you know, did, what was, was there a taboo if you guys didn't do clubs or anything? Was, was, it, I think it was just frowned upon. I, I, it, it was, but it's like, well, if you were like, I mean, to be like extracurricular, but I mean, you could just do whatever. It's like if someone gave you, usually it was like your neighbors or whatever, like, oh, well, my son and blah, blah, blah. One of my friends, not to go on a tangent, but he's like, yeah, I played arcade games and blah, blah, blah. And my neighbor kept on ragging on my mom. And well, here I am with a successful business. And their son is like, I don't know. Do like, I think he's, I think he's, I think he got into trouble with the law. And I'm like, hmm. Yeah, no, Can't. like, yeah, like, like, I will say this. I remember having my own club in college. Like, I actually started my own tokusatsu club. Oh, and, boy. And I made sure that my club was way cooler than the anime club we had because <laughs> bleak the anime club. And because, like, I hated the anime club at both my high school Damn, and weeds. my college. So I'm like, so like, I'm going to make a club that's way better than yours. So I made my own tokusatsu club. It started with like with like with like oh like with like the bare minimum like six members, but two of the members were absentee. So it was just the four of us like every Friday morning watching tokusatsu in like this tiny room. But then like every semester since like we were able to expand more and more, which is awesome. Until I had to transfer to a four year university and then it went downhill from there. But in those yeah. three semesters, I was in charge though. Our yeah. club kept expanding. We had more members. Yeah. We got larger rooms. And I actually organized events. We went we went on field trips. And we got Johnny Young Bosch and Todd Abercorn to actually show up on campus. Well, look at you. <laughs> yeah. Let's see you, anime club, with your with your like obsession with Vic Mignana try to like do literally anything other than like watch Gurren Lagann inside the observatory. Oh yeah, what's well, during that time? Okay, okay. But uh yeah, let's uh yeah. But either or mm -hmm. you know clubs are interesting because what is up with this with this movie and the representation of club of club members? Yeah, like, it's like, oh, it's like yeah, first we got the football club. It's like it's like mind, mind if I block your kick? I can't hear you. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And then there's like all these others that are just like representations. I'm like, you know what? Tell me you're a stereotype without telling me you're a stereotype. Like, why, mind, why, why does mind the if I check why your does, king? Why does the shogi player look like a shogi player? Like a stereotypical shogi player? I'm just like, hmm. Couldn't have been just a normal guy. Just he has to look like an old man moving his glasses up, like you know, like but, a very professional. You know, but you know what's really, you know what's really funny is that um, 
is that those three actors, the teacher, the uh, the goalie, and the shogi player, they were the actual voice actors for Kintaros, Ryutaros, and uh, Urotaros, respectively. Really? Okay. Now I was like, I heard them both. I heard them all three of them, and I was like, "Where have I heard you guys before?" And it's like, again, not. I've seen clips and pieces of Deno. I have not seen Deno fully, but I was like, "Okay, it That's it sounds so familiar. It really does." Yeah, and and uh, and there would be three other Deno cameos. Okay, three and a half Deno cameos. Um, no wait. Probably. We'll yeah. get there when we get there. Yeah, we'll get there. Um, but yeah, so uh, there's like this escape criminal who gets out of prison. And just like in JoJo Part 4, it's like he was supposed to be sentenced to death for after like he kidnapped a woman. But like, she, but like, turns out he survived his execution. This is clearly the work of an enemy stand. I mean, Fangire. I mean, Legendora. So, so then they obviously, they, they you know, like, um, uh, 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 like they're gonna ch chase him, and of course he gets the button, and of course he gets arrested by a police officer who's played by one of the side characters from Deno. Now Deno was before Kiva, am I right? No, yeah. no, Deno was no. What was it? Was Kabuto? Yeah. Was uh, Kuga Agito Ruki fights Blade Hibiki Kabuto Deno Kiva. <laughs> Den okay, so Deno okay, Deno was before. Okay. Yeah. Well, you got people sitting on the on the toy lot, man. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? We need extras in this movie. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much what they do, don't they? I mean, look at any like Toho any Toho. Yeah, yeah, it's like, like it's like it's like it's like when they when they when they start packing up uh, the set for the like, Power Ranger Samurai and start and start filming Mega Force, so, like they go to like are they go to Hector and it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. where do the two of you think you're going? Yeah, we still we need, need you guys for Mega. Yeah, Force. you're still under contract, so you know, come on, like we we gotta we gotta do this. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Like you think you're going, like like freaking like Mike and Emily, the two of you think you're going back to America? No, 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 no. no. You guys are staying here because yeah. like you're still gonna be a Mega Force. Yeah, yeah. Alex might come back later, but right now we need the two of you at a quarry with JDF. So you know. Yep, but yeah, he survived. I'm surprised they didn't do the whole like we shot him 20 times. He lived. We gave him the chair. It's short fused. We tried to pull him by four horses, but the rope snapped. Oh my no! It's like no, this guy just I don't know what the heck they did to him. I thought Japan didn't do the death penalty, but yep, yep. And and the guys, but he survived because he even survived everything. himself and everything. Yeah, yeah. Um. And so then they basically yeah, so. have to go back in time and oh. just. So like, yeah, he meets Jiro and like and the others, and they're like, "Oh yeah, no, Castle Doran totally has the ability to send you twenty two years back in time, like okay. it's Tokyo Revengers you have, and whatnot." You have. It's kind of like wait, 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 wait. This isn't my Star Wars cup. No. So there is a door inside this dragon. There is a door, a door that can literally—it's like the TARDIS could take you back, you know, to all my fellow Hoovians out there, timey wimey, spacey wacy. You know, custard and, and fish and fish fingers. But it's like I can go back in time through this door. Yeah. Why have you never told me about this? And simply is like, you never asked. <laughs> and it's like Jiro, that would be your response. Like, you never asked. <laughs> And I can just see the smug look on his face. I mean, Ricky and Ramon are just like, well, Ramon would just be like this stoic dumbass and just be like, mm. Ricky would just be like, ah. but Jiro, you know, Jiro would be like, motherfucker, you never asked. But yeah. it's like, can I go anywhere in this store? No, it only goes back to 86. So yeah, unless just, like, you just like Tokyo Avengers, like you can only go back exactly. 12 yeah. years, or in this case, 22 years. It's like, yeah, you can only go, if you like, if you like, uh, 
if you like city pop and big hair, you know, you, you can go back. But it's just like, yeah. okay. And, and, and right away, like, Wataru gets jumped by a toy. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but I'm like, wait a minute. I was like, did you? Do, are you two not breaking the space time continuum and rippling the fact that you two are both father and son existing at the same time at almost about the same age? But I was just like, you know what? You know what? <sighs> you know what? Just let, let, let you know what. Screw it. If Doc and Marty, you know, had messed up the time, messed up the timeline. In three movies, I'm like, you know what? Pretty screw it, screw it. Anything goes, anything goes. Yeah, yeah, and and like, so what's funny is that that's where we get our fifth Deno cameo because that's oh, an God. interesting way to like hey, stop Wataru from kidnapping this violin player who turns out to be the mother of a uh, homegirl from the high school. Yeah. Uh, a toy like drives off with water in the car with them. It somehow yeah, takes the time to off. buckle himself Dude. in. They GTA man, they stole the cop car. They like, like they 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 got they got five stars. Hurry up and run over that pedestrian. We can't screw yeah. up this mission. Oh. oh, and a police officer that showed up earlier was uh, Keiji Takawa, the suit actor for Kamen Rider Kiva. I swear to God, if we... Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. That's right. Yeah, I was about to say, if you say Deno again... Like, face if, acting? Like, yeah. Yeah, like, like he does play a recurring character in Ghost, like, as a face actor, as as does Geku Chopper, by the way. But, yeah, mm -hmm. no, it's like... Uh, but, no, it's like... Uh, Jeez, now I'm thinking back on how confusing Ghost was. But yeah, and then they get stuck. It's like, it's like, it's like, oh yeah, if you're from the future, who becomes the president of the United States in, uh, who becomes the president of the United States uh, uh, in 2008? Barack Obama, huh? A black guy as president? You know, like, like that would never happen. America's a very racist country. I guess you're going to tell me next that Oprah's the first lady. And then, and then a talk show host will become president after Obama. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, no. But I'm like, again, if this was a drinking game, it's like, oh, look at all the references and all these shows and all these movies. We'd be dead. There's just so yeah. many people that are just like, hey, look at so and so. Hey, like, and then the and then they get arrested by Naomi from Common Rider Dano, aka Mari. No, not Mari. Uh. Homegirl from Agito. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But because she plays Naomi and Dano, you can expect her to make a cameo. So that's yep. cameo number five. Oh man, we'd be dead if this was a drinking game. Yeah. And 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 I find it interesting that she's dressed up as a police officer because the last time we've seen the characters from Dano would have been in Climax Deca, where they are basically time police. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so that's actually kind of interesting. So yeah, both um, so both Wataru and Otoya are in prison in 1986, and of course, some of the uh, prisoners are like, "Hey, look, uh, hey, look at those boy girls over there! I can't wait to date one of them." Wait, which one exactly? <sighs> you know what? You know what? You know what, Wataru? You know what? You know how you always grab Kiva and make him bite down on something? You got you're gonna start doing that pretty soon. Yeah. Just hold down and bite down and just just accept it. Yeah, so turns out that the reason why uh this uh ref uh, this uh convict is being pursued by the legend or to be their new king is because is because he went because a of, of a prison riot that happened during a violin performance at the prison uh they uh like he ends up accidentally uncovering an ancient legend or ruins inside the prison and, and it basically gives him a black spot more or less that makes him the future king of hell's castle hey he said the line of the movie um but somehow fighting a, a zebra fan guy is what caused it to happen in the first place so pretty much we built a prison above a ancient burial site mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's like watching Lightspeed Rescue all over again. Did you remove the bodies or did you remove the headstones? <laughs> Neither. They just bulldozed them all down and just caved over. <laughs> Oi! And here, I mean... Well, yeah, I kind of uh, thought that was like the biggest what the F. I'm like, so wait, you built a prison over and you guys didn't excavate, didn't bother to look and see what you were building on top of? Nah, nah, we're just going to make a prison. Man, you guys are just lenient with your zoning policies, aren't you, Japan? Oh, yeah, no. No, in America, they 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 would have made like a huge like they wouldn't they wouldn't build a prison. They they would make a uh, tourist attraction out of it. Heck, they could do yeah. both and just make Dead Man Wonderland while they're at it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So they have to go back to the future, and yep, things are relatively unchanged. But all of a we sudden, go back, Marty, we have we've got to go, go back to the future. I, it's it's my it's my kid, Yuri. I have to save my kid. What, yeah, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Do you have a kid? Who did you screw? Who would? Yeah, we're really, like, wait, you have a kid? Who who would have? <laughs> who would have? I mean, your kid's cute. Yeah. Must take after his mother more than you, and it's just like, yeah, <laughs> we'll get there when we get there. Mm. Yeah, which brings up a question that uh, should have been asked throughout the series. Um, I don't know if we discussed this yet, but we know that uh, Wataru is Atoya's a son. son. Yes, and yes, uh, Megumi is Yuri's uh, daughter. daughter. Yeah, and and throughout the entire first half of the series, it's all been about Atoya trying to seduce uh, Yuri, and the whole plot. Climax yeah. is when she admits to Jiro that she's in love with Otoya. Yeah. So it makes me wonder how neat, like how Water. Okay, maybe Water never met his mom. Okay, okay, maybe he was abandoned as a baby. Okay, but like, how does Megumi not know about her dad? And I'm not saying this in the context of, oh, I know what happens at the end of the show. I mean, in the context of, like, watching the show as we go. Throughout it's like, the entire thing, it's like, wait, so your mom is gone, that we are a firm, but where's your dad? Like, where's yeah. your father? Like, you know, like, it, like, it was, it's kind of like, well, that's a very interesting story. Let me explain. Oh, wait. Oh, look, the pink guys are attacking. Yeah, it's just like, uh, there's, a, there, yeah, there's a simple yeah. explanation. There's a simple explanation for that. Oh, look, the Fengire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even I mean, look, when we get there, when we get there with Otoya and you know, how Wataru came to be. Oh, you know, you know. More questions are uh, are raised than they are answered. Yeah, I'm gonna need a double shot of coffee for that one because I'm gonna need an omelet. I feel like it's so out of character for Toya. Mm -hmm. It, I feel like it is, but again, we'll get there when we get there. But so, yeah, we have to so, go back to the future. So somehow, Toya and Yuri do end up in 2008, which doesn't really make sense. Again, you're fucking the timeline. Sure, yeah, and, and, and Yuri's like, and Yuri's like, he's like, I don't want to talk to you, Megumi, because I don't want to screw up the timeline. But the thing but, is, you already have by being here, though. Well, it's like, I, it's like, well, that's the thing. It's like Megumi and her kind of meet up, and it's like, wait, how do you know? Uh, are you? You do know who this is, right? I mean, I understand why if you if Yuri doesn't, but I'm like Megumi, you do. Yeah, so, okay. so uh, Otoya, for some reason, tries to disguise Wataru as a pretty little girl. And yeah. then he's, and he finds out about the concept of G-strings. Which did not exist in the 80s. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, like, that does seem like 
a natural reaction that he would have considering like because like imagine if a classic 80s goth showed up in the 1950s like yeah. people would be freaking out <laughs> very much so yeah yeah, and while and while a goth seems like such a normal thing to see that like you won't even like like do a double take uh, 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 of seeing one, it's like it's like in the fifties, it's like what is this weird thing that's happening here? Is this the work of Satan? She's like, actually, no, it's the work of Ronnie James Dio. May he be praised. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's a... <laughs> and but we do have this weird line from uh, uh from uh Takato that like that like raises your eyebrows. It's like it's like soon Kiva will be defeated. I'm like, why would you want Kiva to be defeated if not for oh my god? But it doesn't even but like it's not even like referenced directly, but but like, turns out, uh, Gorgon uh, is disguised as a Ganguru girl, which seems kind of racist when you really think about uh, it. That was the uh, that was very interesting choice that they did for that. I was like, wait, what? Yeah. So both Yuri and uh, Megumi get kidnapped as they always do, and it's up to Otoya and Watcher to save them. But we get a reverse generational of Vegeta moment where it's like, "Sorry, Dad, I have to do this by myself." And and then upon meeting, uh, uh upon meeting the inmate, he turns him into a dragon fang guy. But at least we have a cool scene of the two female characters actually morphing together. That Such a shame. Like, it's yeah, not Kevin. Nothing much happened with that. Yeah, nothing much does happen with that. I mean, they do buy it off. Um, the remaining uh, Legendora monsters a bit. Like, the two of them simultaneously mur murk Gorgon, just like how Baroon Booster murked um, a Mandrake in an earlier scene, but it's not that special. Uh, but yeah, no, seeing the two of them together murk Gorgon, that was really beautiful. But then uh, they leave it up to uh, Otoya and Nago uh, to, like, fi uh, finish off the other two monsters. While Otoya, unmorphed, has to fight against the dragon Fangire. And in a cute scene, like, the dragon hugs him with his wings, turning back into water. That's adorable. Yeah. But, but, um, but yeah, turns out what, uh, the, uh, the gargoyle Legendora gets immediately murked by Kamen Rider Ray. Who who uh, who starts uh, a duel against Ixai? Because it's like you will always be the Kohai and never the Senpai, and I will always be your dominant. Now kiss my feet. <laughs> but you know it goes about as well as you think it would. Ixai defeats him. Not much to it. <clears throat> yeah, Nago wasn't having it. Nago yeah. was not having that nonsense. Even though I will say the design for Ray is it's actually very interesting. Yeah. Like, not what you would expect out of supposedly the Kiva line or the Kiva bloodline, especially with, with like, you know, the, the, the whole. Uh, well, it's kind of like, so wait, Ray is not canon, but he is because it's like he is part of the checkmate. Technically. Yeah. And then you, you have what. Like, you know, which is, which is later a character just saga, which is again spoilers. A, yeah, spoilers. But I just said saga. I didn't say what saga. What? It's like you know, he's also in the Kiva bloodline, but he doesn't use a bat, but everyone else does. <laughs> like yeah, but I'm like Ray himself, especially using those giant like bear claws that he's got. <laughs> 
I was like, you know what? You could. This could have been a, a very amazing, um, a very amazing power. I mean, I was surprised that Eats I even could. Yeah. He, yeah, he has such a hard time with Kiva, but apparently with Ray, he had no problem. Yeah. So I'm like, well, you know what? I get it. It's a movie, obviously. Not much of canon here. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's not. It is kind of sad to see because, because like when he made his first entrance, it was pretty interesting to see, but like watching back on it, but like watching his final duel against Ixa just felt very cheap. Very rushed. Kind of just like, you know, it's it's it, it's going back to build like when they first introduced Rogue. Oh yeah, that's how it felt. Like, but can you imagine with like the next episode, like Greece, Greece or or Carnax beats Rogue instantly? Like, just, like, instantly, like not even like. No time has passed. No, no, uh, no training. No seeing your progress. He's just like, like you instantly. Like when he first showed up, uh, uh, horrible. Yeah, horrible. Rogue instantly marked one of the three crows. Yeah, but you know, the, it was like he showed up. But I was, like, I know, I know. It's a, it's a movie, so we have to wrap it up. Yeah. I get it, but no. Yeah. Oh. Uh. But yeah, uh, going back to Ark, yes, the inmate finally transforms into the massive nine foot tall common writer Ark, which looks semi decent. I'll say this. He looks it's, it's pretty badass, especially with those twisted horns at the very top of his. So. Yeah, yeah, and I, and yeah. but I and I do appreciate that he goes like underneath that chandelier. That that was that was a nice touch. But it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. also like, how does this guy move around in combat? So it's like, it looks like his physical motions got sped up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Watch the movie. Um, but of course, like Wataru, like he tries to fight him on his own, like in his base form. He almost ends up becoming like Caesar Zeppeli, like with like collapsing rocks on top of him. But uh... Tetzlot shows up. And 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 Ki and uh, and uh, Kiva, it's like it's like I can't believe I have to be rescued by you of all people. I'm like, do the two of you hate each other? What's going on here? Yeah, what's going on there? That would have been a nice place to throw in that uh, famous Shija like meme. Shija. Yeah, I was like, I was like, yeah, Watson is about to pull a fucking JoJo without us even without being referencing a JoJo, but. Yeah, actually, uh, we made so many JoJo references in the movie already. <laughs> yeah, um, especially, especially, especially the uh, let let us tell the folks of that little meme that you sent me because it was just like, oh, it relates to something we did. So apparently, there's a line that <laughs> references like, so yeah, it's like, oh, da da da, like you know, maybe it's like when humans open Pandora's box, and we're like, wait, what? Yeah, no, the fact that we just finished reviewing Build before we watched and before and they we mentioned, Kiva. well, yeah, I'm like, if you know your mythology, you know what Pandora's box is. But the fact that this is within the Common Rider universe, Pandora's box means something completely different. And this is, this is, I want to say, at least ten to twelve years before Build. Uh, exactly 10 years before Bill. Yeah, so 10 years later, they referenced finally the Pandora's box. Not not what I thought, what we assume they're talking about, but it's like, okay, I'll bite. Is there a very well-fashioned snake in the box? Let's hope not, because... I pray uh, not, because his brother rubbed me the wrong way. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's very shameless. Uh, yeah, no, like, oh man, like, honestly, like, the worst thing about Kamen Rider build is knowing that, uh, that evil had a brother. Like, that yes. one detail alone is probably the most cringing thing yeah, about I know. the I know, I know, I know. And that's why we, well, that's why we never speak of it. Yeah, except when we do. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, no, it's like so so unlike Caesar Zeppelli, like he does turn into his his um emperor form, which we did see in the TV show earlier. Uh, yeah, that, we did. that rarely happens. That rarely happens because because usually when they show like like this new form in the movie, they usually do it before it appears in the TV show. Like when they did um like in Project G4, they showed Shining Form before it appeared in the TV show. When they sh uh, when they did uh, um, Paradise Lost, they showed Blaster Form before it appeared in the TV show. When they did um, when they did Kabuto Hyper Form, same thing. It like it showed up before episode thirty five or six when the form actually did show up in the TV show. So. So this is an interesting one where, well, I mean, I mean, in Dano they did show wing form be prior to uh, the movie came out, but here also like Emperor form shows up in the TV show and then in the movie. So okay, here we are, and we get this cool scene where you got Kiva Emperor form along with uh, Otoya Ixa without the helmet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just, mm, mm, mm. and yeah, no, like Ark is like that's it. I don't know. Break the chain, and and like he sucks up all the souls of all the legend door in the world, and like gets like this not my final form thing going. But of course, Kiva Emperor does his rider kick, beats him up, and then we have a. Uh, then we finish off with a um, a culture festival at the high school where we see our final Deno reference. We at, we see the uh, animal costumes that the Imagine wear when they're disguised in the human world. How many is that? Like six? Seven. Seven. Seven, yeah. Seven Deno references. Ah, 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 ah. Yeah, because in, like, in Deno... Uh, Momo, Ura, and Keen, like they disguise themselves as a as a wolf, a penguin, and an elephant mascot costume, so that people don't freak out when they're running around in like in real life. But like, so and then you see the exact same costumes at the culture festival, but you also have a dragon uh mascot which is presumably Ryutaro's so that's cool and of course we get a final like uh violin duet between uh Otoya and uh, Wataru before Otoya and Yuri have to go back to the past and then finally homegirl from the beginning of the movie finally does the movie soundtrack in honor of her mom which by the way I love the, the song for this movie it, it's very it feels very nostalgic and and like it just sounds really good it makes me miss watching trailers for the uh first 10 era of summer films yeah yeah it's like <laughs> the, the song is called circle of life and it's um uh, and it's a nice song. I, I really like it. I, I like it almost as much as if we met in a dream from Kamen Rider Denno, I'm Born. You made it out of Um, But yeah, no, like, summer film soundtracks were so good back then. Ugh. So good. <laughs> and yeah, that's where we end the movies. <laughs> That's just how it ends, man. Yeah, yeah. So, any anything in particular you want to talk about uh, before we go into our scores? <sighs> Not really. I think I've said everything that needed to be said with this movie. I mean, it it, it it's a movie. It exists, and yeah. I'm like, so we're never going to talk about this time traveling door ever again. No, well, we will next week. <laughs> like, right. uh, but but the better question is will Water talk about that door again anytime soon not that I'm aware of yeah yeah no like 
I do wonder like why they make so many Deno references because there's no particular reason for them to do so. And like if they were doing it like in the actual TV show prior to like the release of Climax Deca, I would understand, but it's like and don't get me wrong, it's not that the reference Deno references weren't funny, like they were, and it's cool seeing the voice actors actually make a facial appearance. It's just why <laughs> yeah 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 it's it's not unwelcomed it's just why are you even doing that and again like this movie is not canon because it contradicts a lot of things that happen at various points of the tv shows and and you know that's a thing about whether or not something is canon you need at least two points of contradiction in order to separate it you know like if you had that one point you could say, oh, maybe it happens before or after the, that one contradiction in order to like justify why that contradiction exists. But then when you have two different contradictions where it's like, wait, we – like this acknowledges something that happens after this episode but doesn't acknowledge something that happens before this earlier episode. This mm -hmm. is where we in calculus call a discontinuity. Right, right. Yeah. So – yeah, this, it, it, things are discontinuous in this film. Do I, I like the monster designs. I love the writer design. Some of the choreography is decent, but but some of the fights aren't as memorable as I would like them to be. And I feel like a lot of the um, and I feel like a lot of the things that a lot of the negatives of this movie. I think the reason why I didn't notice them the the first two times I watched this movie was because. I've always watched the movie after episode 28. Because mm -hmm. it's like this. Like when I watched it the first time, I watched it whenever it would be available on DVD. Like, let's be honest. Because like you wouldn't be able to. <laughs> uh, uh, you wouldn't be able to watch it till like after episode 40, maybe. And but the second time when I actually watched the series all the way through in a sitting. You know, I went out of my way to watch Climax Deca after episode four and um, King of Hell Castle after episode 28. And maybe it's because I saw it after episode 28 that I not notice the contradictions as much. But because we're rewatching the movie after episode 24 specifically the contradictions are more noticeable. At least that's what I think is going on. Oh, yeah. 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 And again, I think things would have just made more sense if instead of making the Legendora just one species of the 13 demon races, they should have just made the, the four members of Legendor just four different demon species and then just say they unified as the Legendora team, just like how the arms monsters are three of the demon races that are under the banner of arms monsters. Oh, and Castle Doran is also there, and Kivad is also there, but the point is, we don't have to make, make a bogus species like, oh, a hobbit. Uh -uh. It's like, what would a hobbit demon race even look like? Like, I mean, heck, a leprechaun would have made more sense. Yeah. Just give him a pint. Yeah. Don't do it. All right. So this movie, I give it a low nine. It's a fun movie. It's really decent, but it's got its flaws. And, and it's really hard to judge some of those flaws without considering, like, the events that happened in the T show. But again, it's like we always have to remember that um, while some movies in the next 10 uh, phase are canon, a lot of the movies in the first 10 phase are not canon. And that's something we always have to remember as people who've watched all 20 seasons of uh -huh. the Hestia era. <laughs> yeah, how about you? Like, What are your final thoughts? <sighs> Yeah, well, it's 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 an entertaining popcorn movie for sure. 
you're a fan of Kiba, if you're a fan of just like, you know, what, what crazy shenanigans is watching you and everyone else going to get into, there is mostly that vibe. There's mostly that vibe. Like, this was, this was kind of not what I was expecting out of a Kamen Rider movie, but still. Mm-hmm. The acting was a very entertaining. The characters were believable, and just everyone seemed to be looking like they had a fun time making it. So, yeah, I mean, generally, yeah, especially for the much. cast of Deno. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, what score would you give this movie? Just being that it's not canon or not like you know certain things happen that are not really important to the story, I give it a C. Okay. That'd be like a. Out of ten, it'd be like around like a not about like a seven, seven and a half. Okay, all right, all right. Let's see what the audience have to say. What do you guys think of this movie? Namatrix ninety two says this was a fun movie in a vacuum, confusing if you watch the show concurrently. Nine out of ten. Okay, okay. All right, all right. Triple uh, XYZ says gotta love the dental references. Um, there was way too many. <laughs> Yeah, which were your favorite Deno references in the film? I would have to say for me, it's probably the the one the Momotaro's voice actor in the prison being like, being like, "Oh, I'm Officer Sanjo, Ure Sanjo," because <laughs> uh, uh, because like his catchphrase is uh, because Momotaro's catchphrase is Ure Sanjo, which means I have arrived. But but like mm-hmm. but like because his name is Sanjo, it's like to say I am Sanjo means he has to say Ure Sanjo. <laughs> uh, bad pun. Oh, but, no. uh, how about you? Again, I've not seen Jenna. I've only seen several references, but to know that the cast members came back and kind of reprised their roles in the voice of the characters, I'd say that's pretty much like a favorite. Uh, thing about Deno right there. All right. Awesome. Uh, la- last comment of the night. Strike Hopper says hello. Hello, Strike Hopper. How are you? Hello. Hello. And that's it for the comments. If you guys enjoyed, please be sure to comment, like, subscribe to us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Ding the bell icon to stay notified for our latest videos. Please be sure to share our videos because it helps us out with the algorithms. We do uh, Ultraman Tiga on Mondays. Common Rider Gotchart on Wednesdays, uh, Bakuagi Sentai Boom Boom Jer on Thursdays, and then finally Common Rider Kiva on Sundays. And yes, this next Sunday we are resuming the actual TV show with episodes 25 through 28. So we're going to learn more about what happens with the consequences of Wataru awakening his emperor form and Yuri affirming her affection to... Otoya, will they both have happy endings? Let's find out. And uh, also check out our sister channel, The Buttery Show. We do movie reviews, video game news, etc. And uh, month of March, we finished um, Naked Gun Month in honor of the 30th anniversary of the third film. Uh, In May, we're going to do some more movie reviews, so definitely stick around for that. And with that said, guys, if you want to check out our personal content, you could find my friend here, who's currently an ethereal voice. Um, You know, uh, like you could find him on Instagram, at the Sin Prince. He posts a lot of content, and he takes commissions for... His artwork, his prices are fair, so he says, and I will take his word for it. Uh, yeah. And and you can find my personal content, Boken underscore Kawato, and on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Boken Kawato. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, stay safe, stay hydrated, update your emergency kids, hug your loved ones, and may you have a merry start to your week. As this weekend comes to a close, we'll see you guys tomorrow with some more Ultraman Tiga. Have a good one. Bye.